Hey everyone, welcome to episode 18 of Building My Trike. Today I'm going to be cutting out the holes to make the angle of a wheel a little bit bigger. You can see I've put a little mark where I need to cut out. So that'll allow the wheel to pivot at a greater angle because I think the maximum angle I'll get is about that, which is quite severe. Um, and if you do a straight line, that's probably touching right on the edge there. So let's give that a go. I've got the safety earmuffs on because it gets really noisy when you're ripping at it through with a hacksaw because um, the Kevlar is very tough. You can see it's made the fairing less aerodynamic having the wheel openings just a little bit bigger hardly anything I'll have another look once the wheel's in but good news is it'll be a lot more maneuverable so I ended up cutting out pretty much the entire floor of the bike which kind of sucks but at least I'll have a good steering angle so that's full block now boom to boom and it doesn't scrub the only spot it scrubs is on the inside here on the wheel fairing because it's not quite symmetrical one of them's further forward than the other so yeah the opening is a little bit bigger than i hoped but i gotta keep telling myself this is gonna be a fast bike either way it's gonna be quick stop worrying so today I sanded down the filler for this piece and on these other bits here I did the same and I'm gluing them together and I've got a bit of conduit wrapped in tape holding it together with a bit of tape down here holding it down there so just got to wait for that glue to go off and then I can tap the hole down the bottom. So right now I'm just pulling a vacuum after I've laid some carbon up on the steerer support bits. So I've just uh, got to lay some carbon to reinforce it a bit. And I'm using a hairdryer to heat it up because my electric blanket died and I've literally only got a few parts left to finish um, vacuum forming. So this is the only method I've got currently to warm it up so it cures faster because I'm not holding a vacuum because I'm losing I'm pulling air through the weave of the carbon unfortunately so gotta heat it up as quick as I can just testing out the steering angle of the bike out in the cul-de-sac full lock with the wheel scrubbing is like just good enough I might have to get the smaller wheels. These are 1.5 inch and you can get a 1.35. So I've got a little bit more clearance and I can get the angle a bit better. This is pretty good, quite happy with it. Now that I know the bike can get around my cul-de-sac, it's time to take it down to the small roundabout in my house to make sure that full lock can get me around that. I also want to make sure I can get around corners if I come up to a intersection like this, a T intersection. But if I'm facing straight I can go full lock and then make a corner. So here it is, full lock. Yeah that's that's nice. That's really good actually I'm quite surprised trying to steer in my garage in my sunroom looks completely different from when you're out in the real world on the road and about I'm talking about not very big oh not even full lock I'm gonna be hooking around this at some serious speed this is full lock that's full lock easy money
We'll give that another go. Here we go. See if we can do a U-turn here. I can do a U-turn in a two-way street. A U-turn. How good is this? Car coming, but they're going the other way. Look at him tight. Hit the apex. Stick to the apex. Yes, nice. Super stoked on that. All I have to do is neaten up the openings for the wheels so they're not scrubbing. They're not all jagged and horrible, they're nice and smooth. And that'll be it, I can leave it at that. And then somehow figure out how I'm gonna do a steering stop so I don't go full lock at full speed and burn through one of the tires. Because Kevlar on rubber, it cuts holes really fast. When I was in Battle Mountain, the front wheel of my bike scrubbed on my bike shorts and wore through, wore a hole through, and uh, started rubbing on my skin just after trying to correct from an imbalance from a side wind. So the rubber on the Kevlar will cause a flat in seconds. I've mocked up the left side steerer and I've gone with a 10 degree off 90 degrees here just so it gives me a little bit more reach forward so that's where it's going to sit when I'm in a neutral position and then all the way back and then all the way forward and then here so full lock full lock and then here so I'm probably only ever going to use it for about that much rotation and that'll be perfect because when I'm sitting in the bike it's nice and comfortable and I can rest my elbow just here so I can put like a bit of foam or something here just so I can rest my elbow and just hang on to the steer and get a good grip and it's long enough that I can uh, mount my brake uh, calipers wherever I feel like so what I'm going to do now is cut some carbon up to wrap around here and around all the corners and all up the entire length. I had to split it to get it off the conduit, unfortunately, but I'll just put a little plug in the end just to and glue it in place just to hold it steady and stiff. But uh, I'll wrap that in carbon and stick it in a vacuum bag and suck it down so it's reinforced and super duper strong. I'm going to put quite a few layers around these elbow joints here and where it joins into the, uh, the molded piece down the bottom. And this and the other bit that I've got mocked up ready to go are the last carbon fiber vacuum uh, layups. So after that, I'm officially done with building the bike. And then all I have to do is go and paint it and fill in all the gaps that I've got so over the back just here fill in that little gap where I made a mistake and uh, yeah give it a coat of paint and then I'm pretty much done so you may have noticed in the background of the video that I was filming about a couple of minutes ago in this video um, I have a block of foam sitting here. So what I've done is I've got a bit of timber cut to shape like that and I've got this profile and another profile inside that I'm going to cut into that. So make it, I'm going to have like a profile that way, that way and then that way and then sort of shape the, the sides of it. So this has got nothing to do with a trike. What that is, is a set of aero bars for my friend Mick. So apparently in triathlons, there are no rules on aero bars. So I'm assuming as long as the fairing is attached to the aero bars, it's considered a part of the aero bars. But in normal time trial, UCI, Tour de France stuff, 
there is strict rules on the geometry of the bike, but apparently in triathlons there is none. So what I'm doing is making him a nice little front fairing for his aero bars. So when he's uh, riding along, he can be like this in the aero bars, like that in the aero bar position, tucked right in and have like a fairing that comes pretty much I'll probably cut it about here so you can just see over the top of it and have a front fairing that's like in completely encasing the front of the bike and diffusing the wind pretty much up to his shoulders so it'll be like just shy of his shoulders so the air can flow nicely around it and then just over his helmet and he can just poke his eyes above the top of the fairing so I'm keen to see how much time this takes off a time trial section or a, a bike section for a triathlon so um yeah stay tuned because i might do an update video once i've finished just to show you what it looks like because uh if people are interested i might start production of them so i'll have a mold all i have to do is lay a bit of carbon on it vacuum form it pop it off and uh cut it shape and sell it to people for ridiculous amounts of money so yeah this that's it for this week's episode uh yeah very close to finishing uh I've gone for a test ride this week so stoked on that and uh yeah paint's probably gonna be next week actually yeah i could probably get those handlebars done tomorrow and then installed and then start painting it so stay tuned i'll see you next week